Okay, all set. How's it, Josh? No. How's it, Josh? I know I'm standing between you and lunch, but uh, we still have another 30 minutes to go, 30, 40 minutes to go, so definitely I need more energy. How's it, Josh? Great. Thank you. So today we are here for Gen AI Landscape, and thank you, Satish, for setting up that foundation so very well because that becomes the basis. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of things to learn today. I'll see how much possible I can make it um, interactive. So this is just a quick check about my profile. Uh, I'm working at Infosys at some point of time, seven uh, Google certifications that I've got. And um, Women Tech Maker Ambassador, Developer Academy Mentor. I also mentor NASCOM on cloud uh, under W Square RT program. Blogger, mother, and a cloud facilitator. For all those girls there, I, I saw a lot of people, we have that good ratio, so how is that possible? Yes, if you have passion, definitely you can do that. So what's there in the plan today? Um, we have why, I think some of it I'll just quickly skip because uh, Satish has already covered it, but I have a different uh, perspective of why AI. And then we'll go on to the what. So this is something which I've curated so that you, it will stick on your mind, right? There'll be some key takeaways after you move on. And the how part of it, I know the network is a little unstable here, so I've uh, did some kind of um, experiments that I've put it up on the screenshot, so that will be there. And how many of you are very interested, excited to know Gemini? Gemini, Gemini, whatever. Okay, a lot of hands are up. So um, it was just launched December 13th, so I've just tried you know, uh, including that as well. And the not frequently asked questions, if you have any, we'll pick it up, okay? So with that, why um, AI and Gen AI? And this is something which we all have, uh, we have been using uh, mu multiple places, right? We have machine learning, uh, something on predictive modeling, deep learning, there are a lot of words in, out in the market, and for those who are very honest, Satish also had that point, right? Being honest, how much do we actually know about it? So this is an attempt to just make it a little more structured. We all know in bits and pieces, maybe I know what is deep learning, I know what is machine learning, I know what is um, um, the text bison and all that stuff, but can we make it a little more structured? That is the mind, uh, mind map approach that I'm taking you through. And um, um, it's just a quick definition that we have. Science of making machines do things that would require intelligence if done by men, right? And he's, he's not Marvin, uh, I just uh, added it up there. So if, if you look at AI, right, it has a lot of branches, like you have ML, you have NLP, you have robotics. I wanted to directly do it here, show it through the mind maps, but I just thought maybe, uh, you know, working this way would be better. Um, so we'll just go a little deep dive into the ML part. Is this readable? Yeah? So what's that in NLP? Can anyone from the back rows shout it out, if you have energy? NLP, what is the two branches that is put up there? Okay, NLU and NLG, where you can uh, decipher and analyze. The first part where it is uh, natural language understanding. The second one is natural language generation, right? Now, coming on to ML. Do you all know the difference or the connection between ML, Gen AI, and deep learning, how many of you actually know that? Can I have a raise hands? If you really know what is the connection between ML, deep learning, and Gen AI. Hardly a few, 10, 10 hands raised. So we'll see this, you know, uh, in ML you have supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and all, we'll not go deep into that. But our area of interest is into the next one, where, um, you know, we are thinking that, okay, there was something which was man-made, we wanted to get rid of some mundane tasks, so that is where we started uh, leveraging AI coming into picture, but when that was there, we had a lot of accuracy uh, concerns, right? So it was not reporting accurately, and it had a lot of bugs. So that is when we started developing artificial neural networks, right? So when I say artificial neural networks, this is like you have an input layer, a lot of hidden layers, and then an output, 
right? So in the hidden layers is where your processing and all that happens, similar to, your, uh, to, similar to our human brain, that is where it takes it further, right? So this is like as many hidden layers are there included in the uh, neural networks, that is where it goes into the deep learning. Is the, is the connection clear from where we are, from AI? ML has got branched out, and from ML, uh, you get into the neural networks and all that stuff, and there we get the deep learning coming out in the world, right? Um, so after deep learning, right? So uh, after deep learning, Satish also mentioned this, where we have, again, two branches, where either you can go with discriminative or predictive, whatever you call it, and then we have a generative AI coming into picture, right? So when I say discriminative, um, it is like probably you just say, um, is the session good or bad, right? Did you have your coffee which was uh, completely with sugar or not, uh, not enough sugar, right? It's like either or kind of thing, that is what you do. So that becomes discriminative. But what if you just go there to have a coffee but you are supposed to generate something or maybe create something for yourself, right? So that becomes a generator. Very simple way I'm just trying to help you because there are a lot of students here who may not have involved into the generative AI space, right? So how is generative AI possible? Or you know, how is generative uh, thing possible? If you just uh, go to one of the counters and they say, you know, instead of me giving you the cup of coffee, can you please do it? Will you be able to do it? Yes, if you know the procedure, right? So that is where the pre-trained model comes into picture, where if you know how to do it, you have been fed with the input saying, I am able to do all these stuff, I know how to do things, maybe at least to some extent, I will eventually learn and then come out with a cup of coffee or tea, then it will become a pre-trained model and then you'll be able to generate something, right? Is this making sense? All the students? Yes? Great. Okay, um, now, in the pre-trained models, again, you have different sections uh, coming into picture where either you can generate an image and say the, um, you know, the model basically is on the image or you can go with the text, right? So these are the two branches that we have and uh, some of the examples for image models is more of OpenCV and you know, Google Net and all that, which is already there. But most of us are got inclined towards, we have got inclined towards the GPT part of it, right? So that is where text model comes into picture. It can be GPT, it can be Bloom, BERT, whatever it could be. And that is the evolution of your large language models, right? In the large language models, what happens, all that you already know. But what, what could be the possibility is what I've written down there, right? It could either summarize, let's say uh, I, I just go back and then text it on the browser or, or either using BARD or ChatGPT, whatever, saying, can you summarize how the Google DevFest was, right? So just summarizing or generating some content, uh, generating, uh, doing some search of where is this Kalinga room, anything of that sort, right? So maybe based on the pre-trained information. So to ensure that all of these works, the use cases works, you have a pre-trained data. Only then it will give you an accurate result, right? So we have many more classifications. You have, um, you know, you can rewrite things and you can extract some content and then, you know, generate it a little more. So this is just the why part of it. I wanted to make it a little um, short because the first talk, talk was already about the why, right? And how did generative AI involve and all. Are you get up for the what elements? Now this is where you will get into a lot of products and how did that come into existence? Right? So, what's a language model? Anything which can help you ease out your task, if it can be like a fill in the blanks, right? I'm just saying, it's raining cats, and just leave it blank, it'll fill it up for you, right? Simple. Or it can be like, uh, it's a no-brainer, right? It's like, it's a common proverb and things like that, it'll pitch in. Now, if I have two apples and I eat one, I'm left with, so it involves some computation and then you get a result. So that could be one possible choice. And as Paris is to France, Tokyo is to what, right? It can do some kind of reasoning and give you the output. Now, a, a typical trend that you're following here is there is something which has been already fed as an input, and then you're getting an output, right? Now, let's quickly check this out. Okay, so for any language model, I need to be giving a prompt. 
right? If I need to say something for it, I will have to give it to, through a prompt. And prompt, what is a prompt? It's just the textual input that you give and say that, you know, you want to do this, right? You should be doing this for me. So it's basically how do you design your prompts, okay? And uh, the art and science of what to feed to get the desired output. As simple as this, this is just the new terminologies that has been um, curated here. Now, let's say you've come back from office and then you want a cup of tea. If you just say, bring me a cup of tea, whatever is the person who's, you know, preparing it, it'll just be served in that level, right? But if you want to be very specific saying, I want a cup of tea, maybe ginger tea with less sugar and it has to be very hot, whatever, right? You give the description properly so that it will be served accordingly, right? So that's just the prompt engineering um, that we call it. So we have a lot of platforms, right? I don't have to go too much in depth about this, so we'll move on. Can be played. How many of you know this? Which mo which movie? Aladdin. So do you do you remember this clip? Yes. The energy level has come down again. Yes. Who's the other person there? Genie. Okay. So let's watch this. Oh. Will you be able to play that? I'm not controlling anything from here. Let me just. not able to play. Okay, I actually wanted this to be played. So that's where instead of going through the YouTube, I downloaded the video, edited all of these. So let's see if they can do something about it. Okay, so just waiting for a second. So uh, what is that clip all about? If anyone can do something, tell something about what is that clip all about, if you remember? Yes, anyone? The mics are there, so in case you want to raise your hand and pass. Or if that slide can be streamed from there directly. Yeah, uh, it looks like it's just the image in that slide. No, it's a video. Okay. I have tried tested morning also. Okay. Also. Where is it? Okay. Um, till they set it up, let's see if um, anyone who can give me what exactly that clip was. about uh, he is asking what precisely he wants so does he want yeah what 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 do you uh, what does he want to become so he wants to become rich hmm? he wants to marry the princess uh, jasmine okay That's the only thing he wants to yeah do. so the clip says that uh, maybe we should have tested it once again so the the whole video says that he will just ask um, can you make me a prince right so he, he just, you know, the genie will say that there is a lot of gray area in that make me a prince. And then he'll try to give some images of what the prince looks like. And then he says that, you know, deal is in the details. You get that? I know if that could have been played, it would have been fine. But um, yeah, so the idea here is deal is in the details. So if you do not give the details, what is there in your mind? We are still not reached that level where you just see a person's face and then you get whatever you want, right? The moment I enter the uh, enter the home, there's someone who is serving me a cup of tea in whatever flavor I want. Doesn't happen yet. But yeah, in future, probably it'll happen. Um, something, some troubleshooting is happening or? The slide is in Google Slides, but I think the PPT was made in PowerPoint. It's a PowerPoint. Yeah, when you, it, it's playing in Google If slide, you can download it. We're from, doing that right now. Okay, yeah. So that's there, right? We will um, explore and uh, get that. But before, before that, maybe till they fix it. Is there some questions still now? 
Is there any questions till now or? Okay, fine, I'll just continue. By the time they'll be able to uh, do uh, download it and then play it. So the idea here is whenever you're prompting something, you just have to be very specific, uh, the, give the details properly, and then you'll be able to get the result, right? Now, what are the tools that you already know that this exists and uh, um, you will be able to uh, get the output from this particular thing? Is it done? You're able to play? Okay, thank you so much. Audio? Yeah, we're just getting the audio from this sort of just... It yeah, yeah, sure. We're just going to play it out. <laughs> okay. So I should have given more details saying don't play it from Google Drive. <laughs> Directly <laughs> download, it, download it onto the system. To go. All right, any, any tools, if you can remember by, by then, any tools that you remember using for generative AI? Don't give me BARD, beyond BARD. Dali, okay. Yeah, we're ready. You're ready? Okay, please play that. Hey, can you make me a prince? There is a lot of gray area in make me a prince. I can just make you a prince. Oh, no. Right, you'll be snuggled up with that dude for the rest of your life. Yo, y'all see my palace? Be specific with your words. The deal is in the detail. Got it. But you don't really understand because if she already likes you, why change? I told you, she has to marry a prince. I just want to go home, man. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, thank you so much. Because this was the more important thing, visual appealing for them. So that any type of prompt engineering you get into, you shouldn't be just giving a blank whatever is uh, output uh, in your mind. You should be giving the right input with the details, right? Thank you so much. Can I switch with the slides? This one? Okay. Okay. So some of the best practices very quickly we'll go in, and then we have very less time to move to the how part of it, so we'll switch over quickly. Clearly communicate what is your intent, even if you know that your manager is sitting in front of you. You have to clearly say that, I want to take a leave for this reason, because something, right? Don't just say, I want leave. Is that making sense? Or for all the college students, I want to bunk my class for whatever reason, right? Okay. So the structure of the prompt, whatever uh, it is supposed to go, uh, what, is, what is the outcome, so all that you have to be very specific. I'll just, um, uh, and don't, don't make it very lengthy, full stop, next sentence, full stop, next sentence, and then you can hit and enter, okay? So that's one thing. And uh, in prompt engineering, you have zero shot, one shot, and few shots, right? And what is zero shot? I want to leave. No uh, reasoning there, right? Or I want to bunk my class today. There's no reasoning. So it's just a quick statement that you're making without any reasoning. So that's your zero shot. And it'll give you some vague answer, probably. So one shot is giving an example, right? Giving an example could be like, I want a cup of tea in this flavor, right? Something like expanding beyond what is your requirement. And after that is few shots where you feed a lot of information saying that, okay, I was in deficit today, and this was how the pulse of the audience were, and if I give this as an input, this should be considered as positive. If I give this as an input, this should be considered as negative. So you give a lot of inputs, um, kind of sentiment analysis that you try doing it, and that's your few shot. Is this very clear? In prompts, you have zero shot, one shot, and few shots, right? And there are a lot many things, like chain of thought and all that is there, but we'll not go into that for now. The next thing, uh, this looks um, um, a lot of things there, even though you will not be able to see some of these, uh, whatever is written, so it's okay. Basically, if your data is image and text, based on the image, you can either create a text, an image, or a video. And if your input is text, you can either make it as a text, or an image, or an audio file, or some decision making, right? So you completely branch out. Do you remember that when I said, the LLMs can be text-based or the image-based, right? So what are the infinite possibilities that we have? I've just listed, listed, and some of these, with respect to Google Cloud, is what we'll see it now, okay? So the why and what part is covered. Now we'll exactly go into the how part, right? I have another 10, 15 minutes. 
uh, to go. So um, the how part, right? So the how part, um, if it is for the consumers, right? So the generative AI on Google Cloud, if it is for the consumers, you have BARD and you all have been using it for your assignments, for your letters, for your whatever reason, right? Being it creative or making it um, your buddy kind of thing, making it for, you know, using it for innovation and all that. So that is BARD, okay? Now, if you want to get into the developer perspective or or you want to develop something for the enterprise perspective, that is where we have the Maker Studio, which Maker Suite, which came into uh, Generative AI Studio, which is like Vertex AI Studio, right? Vertex AI is basically an umbrella which bags in all of these products that I'll be telling you about, right? So, the next one. Are we uh, ready to get into the next one, the Vertex AI part of it, right? What is the first one uh, after the model garden? First one, can someone read it out? Loudly? Okay, first one, that's for the consumers. I'm saying after the model garden, what is it on the top? Google Foundation model, so it's readable probably, right? So you have, um, so what is, what is a garden basically? What's a garden? Plants. You have a lot of plants, right? So you have a lot of plants and you have chosen all those plants and sometimes it will have weeds as well. So garden is basically a collection of some entity, right? It could be plants, it could be whatever. So model garden is you have a lot of models which has got developed over a period of time, and then you classify them into multiple sections. So for now, for ease of remembering, I have seg uh, segregated as foundational models, task-specific models, and domain-specific models, and the partner ecosystem, right? Some of the task-specific models, we all have been using it knowingly or unknowingly, and we will just quickly check on that. Task-specific models, how many of you have used Google Translate? Almost all, right? So even if you go to some country or you want to uh, give some message in some other way. So translation, we all know it, spe uh, speech to text, text to speech, vision and all that. So this is something which we know, right? We have been using, and this fits into the model garden itself. Now, the next thing that we will go on is on the foundational models. Right Now, in this foundation model is where the first thing that you might want to check is the PAM, right? PAM 2, where there's the ne next version, where you would want to go and uh, figure out that if I want to give a text or a chat, I can build a conversation kind of thing, or I can just say a text input and get a text output back. So that is the PAM. Before that is your Kodi. Kodi is the name where you can generate some code models, and then we will take up what next do we have written code. Uh, but these are the major things that you have, and chirp is more of a speech, right? You give a speech, it will convert to text, or if you give your text, you will convert into a speech. So this was also existing in the task-based model, but now under the foundational model, this is also bundled as chirp. They've given a name called chirp, right? And imagine. Imagine is generating images, and this is Google's own product, where you can generate uh, you just have to be wild enough to think something imaginable, and that can be generated using Imagine, right? One of the demo, I'll, I'll just show you that, what could be Imagine, and embeddings. Now, embeddings, embeddings, anyone know what an embedding is? Yeah? Can you be a bit loud? Tell me. If you have a mic. Yeah, maybe if you can be a bit loud. What is embedding? Uh, converting text into a vector format, but why do we need that? Exactly, so you know zeros and computer knows only zeros and ones, and we would want to give something like input. So if you want to uh, make that understandable by the computer, so that's where embeddings comes into picture, right? Um, and then you also have your Duet AI, which is recently launched again for all the things that you would want to bundle everything, you know, inclu including your chatting, including your coding, including your chirping, all that if you want to bundle. And Duet AI is the recent product. Uh, if you just search on Google or on LinkedIn, there are a lot of places where you can try out um, the Duet AI uh, things, and it's in 20 plus languages, right? So, and then we have domain-specific models as well, like for medical and life sciences, you have MedPalm and then security palm for the cybersecurity stuff, right? So basically you are 
um, generating, and some of these are open source, some of these are specifically generated by Google. So it's all kind of collating to each other and then complementing um, something that I want to generate in, in the long run, right? And then partner ecosystem, you have Falcon, Cloud, um, and all of that. So we'll quickly go on to some of the examples, right? So basically, if you look at the portfolio, right, you have the uh, infrastructure, which is like the green layer, which is either your TPU or GPU sitting um, as the infrastructure layer. On top of that will sit your model garden, right? Model garden where you have mm, uh, all the models that we spoke about will come into picture. And there you have your AI platform. It could be search, it could be conversation. And then what takes AI is the whole umbrella that we are having for all of these, OK? Is this clear? So we'll move on. Um, the next thing which, uh, which I wanted to show the demo, but I thought maybe I'll just um, try uh, putting it here, the screenshots. So the first thing is when you give a prompt, uh, there is this responsible AI part of it coming into picture, because whatever you give, you cannot just generate something and then throw it as a response. So the, it'll have a filter of responsible AI thing, and then further, um, it'll do uh, get into the foundation models, whatever it is supposed to do, it'll get generated, and then send it back to the citation check. Now, what is grounding here? Basically, whenever I say that uh, this image is being pulled, I also give the citation as in where is this being pulled from, right? So that's the simple example of grounding. So if you have tried it in BARD, um, if you get some images, the images also will have a link from where is that uh, being pulled, right? So the, behind the scenes, that's the grounding that we talk about, okay? So um, in Palm, you know, you can get into uh, the text and chat, and uh, Satish was showing some of his curl commands um, on the screen, right? So curl commands also you can use, or you can go with Python SDK, or with the Genii Studio. Genii Studio is, again, you have your, um, I, I think you, you have it either Vertex AI Studio or Gen AI Studio. If you go to Cloud Console, you will not find Generative AI Studio anymore. It will be Vertex AI Studio, right? And there comes the star there. What is the star in the slide? What's the star in the slide? I've not put any star there, but yeah, Gemini. So this is a snip from the console that I just pulled it. So it was there. I mean, the text part is there, and you were using a model called Text Bison. But beyond that, since um, I think December 13th onwards, we have started using Gemini Pro as the model, right? You, you still have other models also available, but whatever you want, you can go ahead, use the Gemini and figure out, you know, what is that multimodal thing that Gemini is all about. So this is the last topic for today. Uh, so how many of you are in love with Alia? Alia Bhatt. How many of you watched what Jhumka song? Come on. Your girlfriends are not here. You can, girlfriends or boyfriends are not here. You can raise your hand. That's it. Half the crowd. Half. Only this side, they are not active. You've not watched what Jhumka? No? <laughs> okay. So what Jhumka, what is what Jhumka? Anyone who can explain it for all those who didn't raise a hand? Honestly, maybe they've not watched the video or what's the song. What is what Jhumka? Quickly, I want, I know you all are waiting for lunch, but it's a song. What, what, is, what is in that song? It is about uh, Jhumka of that uh, Alia Bhatt. <laughs> Ranbir Singh is talking about. OK. So the whole world was so obsessed about that song, and then a lot of million views and all. Now, how many of you watched? What the quack? What is what the quack? If you have not watched, I think it's high time to switch from what Jimka to what the quack. What the quack is that video that Gemini introduced. You've watched this um, video? DeepMind, Gemini, and this is where the blue duck comes into picture, and then it will start saying, oh, it will start uh, drawing that, you know, uh, the, the person will start drawing it. And then they say that, oh, I don't know what is this. And then the duck swimming in water, and then they will make it blue. So it will say that blue is not the color of duck. And then they will again mention that, you know, um, it is making a squeaky sound. So that is where Gemini sees that what is that quack. And then it will figure out that because of that squeaky sound, it probably could be a material from rubber or plastic, right? 
So that kind of reasoning is what Gemini is capable of doing. Is that making sense? If you just say, I'm making a squeaking sound, will you be able to identify what is the material of that? No, right, probably. So uh, all the kind of multimodal thing which has got included in it, and that is where it is able to give something and then playing the game or making some puzzles, so all that. If you have not watched the video, just go on the internet, Gemini Pro, DeepMind, you have that video, watch it later. So I tried using this um, in my, uh, exp um, you know, in my demos. So what are the three forms that Gemini has? You have an Ultra, you have a Pro, and you have a Nano. Something that I've tried it, I will just show you here. How many of you are interested to see what, what Gemini Pro how does it look like when it is in action? Okay, some of you have raised your hand. I don't know if it's readable. I have put in uh, the first red highlight. Can you, can you read it? What is that first red highlight? How are you feeling at the Google DevFest Bangalore? Right, this was just tried yesterday, last night. So anyone who wanna share your experience quickly before Gemini I mean, Gemini already has given the answer, right? If you see the other end, the model that I've used from my console is Gemini Pro. You have a drop down. Either you can go with Text Bison, Gecko, multiple things, or you can go with the Gemini Pro from the console, right? By the way, you'll have to have a Google Cloud console to try out from the developer's perspective, right? And it says that I'm an AI language model. I don't have the capability to get into that feeling. So it gives you a lot of things, a lot of advancements, and uh, some exciting projects to collaborate, and all that comes up there, right? So that is from the output from the Gemini. So there are a lot of components when you want to give your content, right? Uh, for this alone, I had to switch over to Text Bison because when you put it in Gemini, you will not be able to do um, check the maximum responses to eight, right? I can just do only one because the streaming will start happening with the Gemini, so you'll not be able to make this alone. Uh, maximum response alone to multiple things. So that's where I switched back to the um, text bison. So temperature is like if it's very cold, it'll give you a restrictive correct um, input, but otherwise if it's very hot, meaning going to uh, the other end, it can give a lot more uh, creative stuffs. And um, you know, token limit, four characters becomes your one, one token, and then you can go ahead, um, check on that. Top K, Top P, um, I think Satish mentioned about it. Top P is more of the probabilities that you can generate from the tokens, right? So that comes up. How many responses do you need? I have asked a question, how was the, feel, how was the you know, experience at Google DevFest? You can get one response, two response, three response, up to eight, depending on the model that you have chosen. So all that comes up there. And the safety filter. Because this is from Gen AI, um, we don't know what kind of data it'll pull in. So the safety filters are there, and for every parameters you can set it saying, uh, for now I've given okay to hate, toxic, and violent to some parameters level, it's okay. But beyond that, rest of all the things, I've given it as zero, saying I don't want any other type of content to be displayed in my output. Is that making sense? So that was the safety filter which was there towards the end, right? Safety filter threshold to a, towards the end, that is where it gives you all the output, okay? All right, so a lot more funny things that was coming up, I'll just tell you. Uh, so this was something which I gave you, uh, gave it, saying, um, what is that? It was time well spent, and uh, this, I, I moved it from the free form to the structured, right? In the free form, it, uh, free form, it was like just one uh, zero shot. Now here it is, uh, the structured model, I said it was time well spent. Here again, output, it was just giving me time well spent because it doesn't know the context of what, what should I explain, right? So that is where we move on uh, to giving some inputs already, saying, giving some examples, saying that a well-made, I mean, this was not for the deafest, by the way. Um, it was something uh, that I've given. I fell asleep after uh, 10 minutes. So this was a snip taken from one of the labs that I've taken. Um, you know, movie was okay, and by the way, this is not a movie. So um, if you feed in all the inputs, now it knows that if this is the input, it has to tell me positive, negative, or positive. Then if you give the input, it knows it has read through the examples, it will start giving you what should be the output, right? So some kind of sentiment analysis that you want to do. And by the way, all of these, you can actually save it. 
right? If you see my sentiment analysis, I've saved it. It will come up in your prompts saying, I can save whatever prompts that I've given and then use it further. So yesterday night, you know, 15th, I was just trying something. So, and by the way, for now, all the prompts that you have been using will be stored in US Central 1 only. You cannot try putting it in some other, um, you know, uh, regions. So that's there. And uh, one more. So I'm giving a context to the uh, model, right? Saying you are a Google DevFest organizer, organizer. You're requesting for a feedback from the speaker at DevFest, right? So um, you need to ask, would you like to be speaker next time again? Okay, so this is the context I've given. And uh, the user, which is like me, uh, I'm typing in saying the session was amazing. Okay, session was amazing. So what is it giving? It'll say that I'm happy to hear uh, the session was amazing and would you like to be a speaker? So the question comes up like that. Now the next thing is, what was the next user input that I gave? Audience were super excited. So accordingly, it'll tailor make that answer, right? Saying, okay, nice, I'm glad to hear that. But imagine if I've said some of them were sleeping and the Google says that, you know, sorry to hear that. This is fine because it knows the context. Imagine if this was not said properly and if I give this as an input and it'll start saying, I'm glad to hear that some of them were sleeping. How does it look? Right, funny, <laughs> okay? So that kind of context setting is what you can do. And finally, the vision API um, that you have, I just uploaded this image and uh, told, you know, where, where was this, uh, I mean, just give a caption for this, and then some of the Q&A, uh, which I asked, where is this happening? So it'll start giving me the output saying this is somewhere in Bangalore. So just with the image, it can generate something. Okay, I'm getting a signal, it's like, time up. So this, are the, again, a lot of stuff for the Kodi part, which you can check if it is for generation, you have a different model, chat a different model, code completion a different model, and some of the model languages that it can support. And this one, uh, again, I don't know if that video can be played, but you can try it out on your, um, yeah, luckily it's, it's playing, yeah? So this is as imaginative as you can. It's just a wooden uh, thing which is coming up and landing up on a space. Uh, you know, so that's the image and thing that you can explore. And the chip. Hey, it was an awesome session at Google Dev Fest, Bengaluru. Love you for being an amazing audience. Whatever you've learned so far, start implementing. Let's catch up on LinkedIn at Ramesh Rajini. So this is just something that I gave as a speech and uh, it'll, sorry, I gave it as a text, it'll generate as a, a speech, right? And uh, that's it, a quick recap. I don't know how much of this is visible, but yeah, if you have time and if the organizer gives some time, um, we can ask some questions. Thank you, Rajiv. We can like, take a few questions. Uh, lovely, yeah. lovely session. A round of applause for that, please. Thank you. Uh, we have time for a couple of questions. Uh, show of hands, anybody has a question? Okay, that side, please. Can you have the mic there? Uh, anybody in the back have any questions? Just show of hands, we'll get a mic to you as well. Yeah, we'll just take a couple of questions. Yeah, hi, uh, Rajiv. Hi. Uh, so I just wanted to ask, like, uh, both on Bard or uh, ChatGPT or any of such uh, uh, gen text tools that we have. Sometimes you ask a question and then there's an answer that we're getting for it. But then there's this thumbs up or thumbs down that you're satisfactory or unsatisfactory. Uh, so is by just giving thumbs down, let's say I'm not happy with the response, uh, how are um, you know the developers of that particular tool actually improving the response without getting the context? Yeah, so probably uh, if I am a bar developer, thank you for that question. So if I'm a bar developer or a chat GPT developer, I would have given you the correct answer, what is going behind the scene. But my assumption is based on that response also, it will be fed into the algorithm saying some kind of hallucination is happening. So you need to figure out what went wrong in that, right? So we are not sure like how much of the data will be actually taken and then put into action, but that could be possible. Yes. Okay, I think we had one more question there. Yeah. Yeah, one yeah. more. Yeah, uh, hi. Uh, thanks so much for such a wonderful session. I Thank just wanted you. to quickly ask, just for the benefit of the audience as well, if we could just go to the last and the second last recap slides for a second. Yeah, yeah, sure. If uh, they allow me. If that's okay, just yeah. for like literally your. Uh, what I can do can is if I can share it on XMind. Can you switch uh, to the slide, please? Can you switch, switch to, the to the slide? I'll go back. Okay. Oh. This one? Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. So, um, 
my question is at the same time quite simple and short, right? <coughs> Where do you feel as, you know, Ramesh Rajni is next? What's, Where do you what's coming next in, in your view and what's exciting about what's coming next? For me, for me, I think the Kodi part, because it's like developers will be more interested to know uh, how beyond Kodi, whatever existing models that are there, beyond that, what can they do? And uh, I am interested to get a little more in this domain specific models, because for me, something which goes um, very irritating is on the law space, right? Indian judicial system where the lawyers will just keep postponing things further, further, and uh, the date, they don't get the dates. So something beyond this uh, medical and security, I know that it's a lot in place, but uh, medical and security beyond that, if we can include a lot money, uh, financial sectors or manufacturing sectors. So that's something which I am more interested about. Yep, yeah, and hopefully that answers. That's all the yeah. time we have. Yes, Thank you yes. for such a lovely session. Uh, once again, a round of applause. Just for one second, okay? Yes, yes, because okay. you know he had a question of why it's Ramesh Rajni. Ramesh is my father's name. Dare to be different, right? We'll all add our uh, you know, husband name towards the end. So it's father and then me, and uh, it's later is <laughs> when I come. Absolutely. Thank that's, you so that's much. That's so awesome. Thank you so much for the session. Uh, I think your phone's here. Yeah. Here you go. All right. All set for lunch. Okay then, yeah, we will be breaking for lunch shortly. Uh, we have lunch, I think, set out exactly where we had it. Uh, is there any change in the location? I'm not sure. I think it'll be the same place where you had tea coffee. Uh, shout out to our sponsors once again. Google, the main sponsor for this, GDG DevFest. Uh, gold sponsors, Nasdaq and uh, Resumex. Silver sponsors, Beckon. We will be breaking for lunch and back here at 1.15. We will start the next session sharp at 1.20. Please try to be here on time so that we can get it started on time. Have an excellent lunch. We'll be seeing you back shortly. Another heads up, 3 to 4 p.m. in the community launch. There'll be a women tech makers catch up. So it's open to all. It's open to all uh, women as well. It's primarily looking for networking for women. So it's a WTM, that's women tech makers catch up at 3 to 4 p.m. in the community launch. We'll catch you in about 35 minutes.